Hello, my name is JT Tepley. I am with Elotech, and today I'm going to be giving you a demonstration of the director tool, which is used alongside Elotech's TWN4 RFID reader. Before we get started, I want to go over the table of contents of what I'm going to be talking about today. First of all, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the TWN4 and the director tool. Then we're going to actually open up the director and start using its features. The first one is called Simple Test. Then we're going to move along to the function builder where we will be actually testing out a couple different functions one for an iClass card and one for a MyFair card. And finally, as always, I will give you our company contact information. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first of all, our TWN4 is a dual frequency all-in-one reader in that it can read all technologies all the time, whereas most other readers are single frequency and designed to read only one or two technology types at a time. The director tool is located within the development pack of the TWN4, and it's used to easily access all of the built-in functions and APIs, and API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it can access all these functions and APIs that are designed specifically for the TWN4. And the most powerful thing about the director tool is that you can develop complex, complex applications for your TWN4, controlling its behavior and that of the transponder in use, and you can do it all without writing a single line of code. Okay, so the first page here is called Simple Test, and as the name would suggest, this is just an easy way to scan a card. And it's a good way, if you don't know which technology type you have, to find that out, because when you scan a card, it'll show you the unique ID or UID, it'll show you the UID bit length, and then it's also going to show you the technology type. So down here, under Select Tag Types, if you click this drop-down, this is where you can choose to turn on, and, turn on or off all the technologies you want. So you can check this box to turn them all on, uncheck it, and then pick and choose which ones you want. For now, I'm just going to leave them all on because I have a stack of random cards here that I'm going to be scanning. Under ID Format, you can change it to Decimal or Binary. I'm just going to leave it as Hexadecimal. I can turn this Cycle box on, and that way the reader will just continually scan. I don't have to click Search Tag each time. And then also Display New ID Only ensures that I won't scan the same card twice. So here we go. We're ready to start scanning. This first one here is an HID Prox and I class in one, and it'll scan both at the same time. Like that. This is a MyFair card. Next I have a Legic. And I only have a small stack here, and the list is much larger than this, and it's constantly growing. This is an Indala. Uh, tag it. And then I also have a Cassirusco key fob, and it'll scan that as well. Okay, although the TWN4 can read all technologies, and this is a great feature, we strongly recommend once the reader is ready for installation and to be used in a real application, that you reduce the number of technologies that can be read to improve performance. Also on Elotech's YouTube channel is another video uh, that's called Performance Optimization for the TWN4, and this will show you an example of how the performance will improve once you reduce technology, so we, we strongly recommend doing so. Okay, so for this example, I'm using an iClass card and a MyFair card, so I'm going to check those two boxes and leave every other technology turned off. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the function test tab here, and this is where we actually access the function builder. We're going to test out a couple different functions. Right here in the API dropdown, you can see it's currently selected to all. So here are all the built-in functions that can be accessed with the director. You can see there's quite a bit but we made it a little bit easier and also divided it up into categories. So you have at first general um, categories for all TWN4s, and then you have functions that are designed down here for specific card types. So I'm gonna use the dual frequency card, the HID Prox and iClass card first, but because I only selected HID iClass in the previous menu, it's going to ignore the, the Prox tag and I'm just gonna be working with the iClass uh, part of the card. But before I can get to functions that I have to do specifically with an, I, with an iClass card, I have to first scan this card again and let the director know which technology I'm working with. So I select RF, radio frequency, and then I'm going to select search tag here. And this is the same function that we used back here, just a different way to get to it. So let me rest my card on the reader just to keep my hands free. And I click send. And here we're working HID iClass, so we're ready to go. So now on the API dropdown, I go to iClass this time. And where is it? There it is. And we're going to be getting the, the PAC number, the physical access code. And it's a special case with the iClass cards. Not only do you have the UID, you also have something called the PAC that's associated with the card. So this function is used to obtain it. And we just click send. And here we can see the result is true, so it worked. Here's the PAC uh, bit count, and then the PAC itself. Okay, so now let's move on to the MyFair card. And the 
The great thing about this center log window here is you can double click on a function to recall it, which is pretty handy. So again, we have the search tag. Now we're working with a MyFair card. So let's go to the MyFair Classic um, drop down here. And then th for this card, we're actually going to be reading and writing data. So first we have to log into a sector of the card. And this is an unlocked MyFair card, so it's going to have a default key associated with each sector. And the keys could be different based on different sectors. I already know mine is this key here. It's the usual default key that's used, which is all Fs. There are three other possibilities, and you can find them in the API reference guide, but I already know this is my key here. So, and obviously, if you have a locked card, you're going to have your own key associated with that card, and this is where you'd want to put it in. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to log in. Click send. Result is true, so we are in. Now let's try to read some data that's in sector 0. And if you're in sector 0, you have access to blocks 0, 1, 2, and 3. If you're in sector 1, you have uh, access to blocks 4, 5, 6, and 7, and so on. So I'm going to select this read block function here. Let's just try block 0 first. Click send. So you can see there is some data already there. Let's try block 1. And this one has all zeros. So let's go ahead and try to, to write over those zeros. And now we need to go to write block. And let me pull up my notepad here, and I just have some default data. And this is just going through each of the ASCII keys. There's two Fs, two Es, two Ds, two Cs, and so on, just to keep it simple. And I'm going to copy and paste that in there. And just know the 0x here in front of the data is just letting the computer know that it is in hexadecimal form. So we're going to write to block 1, and I just copy that data and paste, and then I click Send. So there it goes. Let me scroll over. The result is true, so it should work. Now let me try to read back block one by double clicking. And you can see now this data has changed. It's no longer the zeros. It's the new data that I put in. And the other handy thing you can do with this log window is if you want to save your work and maybe come back to it later and use it for a different card, or you can send it to somebody else and they can access the functions that you were using. So here, let me get rid of this iClass card because it doesn't have this iClass function because it doesn't have anything to do with the the MyFair functions we're using, so I just click Clear. And now let's say I want to save these functions, so I just click Save to File. And I'm just going to save it on my development pack, and I'll just call it Test. Uh, oops, I already had one, but I'll just replace it. So now if, let's say, I X out of the window and I lose all the functions that I, I don't want to have to go back and find them again, I can just load that file. It's this HST file here. And here they are, and if you just click Run once, it'll go through and redo everything we just did. Okay, that's about it for this video. As always, here is our contact information. If you have any sales and customer support needs, please be sure to send an email to either the first or second address you see there, depending on where you are. The third email down is our technical support team. If you have any technical issues or you're looking for more information on the capabilities of the director, that would be the email to send a message to, and they'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you look in the description of this video below, you'll find the user manual and the data sheet for the TWN4. You're going to find the user manual for the director, and finally also the, the API reference guide, which will break down each function and give you a short description of what it does. Once again, I'm JT Tepley with LTech. Thanks for watching.